Turn off, Turn off the music. Turn off the music. Turn off the music. Turn it off. I came here, y'all. I was okay. And then I got sad. I was looking on this little website where you can buy you stuff. I got a little sad. Okay, um... Do y'all remember me telling y'all about my shirt? My little... Hold on, because you know Gary. Yeah, he he has the TV blasting. So, um... Do y'all remember me telling y'all about... Do y'all rem remember me telling y'all about my uh, Sweet Sixteen birthday party? Um, that was the first and only time that I can think back in history that the Backstreet Boys was here in Knoxville. Not that they're torn, that they were here in Knoxville, Tennessee, where I'm at. Now, the reason why that was so special was because I was a big Backstreet Boy fan. So, to me, I felt like the, the stars lined up for me on that birthday. I had the money, so it wasn't like I didn't have the money to go. I had the money. Um, they were in Knoxville, Tennessee. It was November the 29th, 2000, which was my 16th birthday. To me, everything lined up. Well, because my mom is a spiteful woman. Very spiteful woman. She's like, you can't go. Now... Thinking back, I probably should have just moved some stuff around. Because I, I couldn't go because she said I didn't clean my room. Okay. Okay, Heffa. Okay. Anyways. Yeah, still still to this day. Almost 20 years later, I'm still holding a grudge. Almost 20 years later. November the 29th, 2019 will be 20 years. I'm just saying. Right. Yeah, because I'll be 36. Nope. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be 36 on that day. But anyways. So, um. So I couldn't go. Had my money. Bought the tickets. She saw my tickets. Front row, backstage passes. And I was, I had a, I even had a ride. I was going to ride with one of my friends at school. Anyway, she found out I couldn't go. She's like, I will get you, um, I'll get your t-shirt. Or she said, I'll, I'll buy you something from the concert. Next day, went to school. And what did I have? An autograph. T-shirt from the Brian Luttrell Heart Foundation. And it was very special because on the back, Happy Sweet Sixteen birthday marquita that was to me that was my birthday i should have been there i could have got that in person okay i take only a tad bit of blame because i should have just moved some stuff around make it look like my room was clean anyways so i didn't get to go let's cut to so this is november 2000 right Maybe what, 2000? Yeah, I was 16, 2000. Okay, so let's cut to uh, maybe May. May of 2000. Because I'm going to say custody August of 2000. So it wasn't August. But um, I remember it was hot. And now I'm a big Backstreet Boy fan. Big, big, big Backstreet Boy. Did not, did not wear the shirt. I used to um, help my mama's boyfriend wash cars. I had I had a plan what I was gonna do. I was gonna wash clo uh, wash 
cards enough to get me a shadow box now i probably wouldn't have got the authentic shadow box because all i was gonna do was just get a um a poster of brian and get the big old picture frames put my t-shirt in there that was autographed and because i never wore it immediately so it wouldn't get dirty hung it on my wall immediately okay so um, so that's what I was going to do. I was waiting, you know, till it got warm enough, you know, worse, and, and when I wasn't in school, you know, enough that I can wash some car, you know, help out, do a little something, something, so I can put my little, uh, shirt in a shadow box. My, in my head shadow box, in reality, it was just going to be a picture frame. Because that's what I was thinking the shadow box was. I know no different. Okay, so like I said, it's hot. I'm asleep. I wake up. And I know that something's missing. Now, if you wouldn't knew, if you wouldn't have seen my bedroom, I had a bed, I had a nightstand, I had a radio, and then I had I think ten pictures. Of the Backstreet Boys on my wall. Now, each of the pictures had to have Brian in it or they were not allowed on my wall. Now, on my floor, I made a floor. Like, my floor was made. I put glue on my floor and I put different posters on my floor. That's how my floor was. No, I didn't put anything on top of that. But I never mopped my floor. Okay. Say what you want to say. But I didn't. So, that's what my my other posters was but the only posters that was on my wall was brian and if if it was the rest the other four of the guys it had to have him front and center and and you know what i love john to tell thomas but even he didn't make the wall he didn't make the wall now he did have his own little folder and and a little you know thing and i kept his pictures and you know stuff very sacred tucked away i did but i wanted to see brian that was my love that's who i wanted to see okay so um wake up i noticed something's missing in my head i'm like one of my pictures fell down but i couldn't tell you which one Cause I'm like, okay, this one and how my how my room was, it was like my bed was against the wall, which was up under the window, and right across from my bed was like a wall, and which was um, right there where my closet was, and so when I wake up, boom, there's Brian. As soon as I sit up, and you know, because I only had one way I could get out of bed. You know, because my the other side of my bed was right against the wall. But I had a poster right there. It wasn't my favorite, but it made that wall. Just in case I was asleep, I roll over, I wake up. Boom, there's Brian above my head. Boom, there's Brian. Okay, so the only, the only wall that did not have the Backstreet Boys and Brian is, like, if I sit up and look for, frontward, towards the door it didn't have it now i did have a poster on the back of my door but because i was like no i want all my that i want all my brines close to me they were in that facility okay but my favorite favorite one was the one when i get up out of bed swing my legs over to get out of bed boom i can't i don't even remember i think he had on a beige jacket white shirt or it was like a, a olive green, sh like I don't remember what it looked like. I remember the face, but I don't remember what he was wearing. But that one was my favorite of Brian. The shirt was beside my second favorite, or besides, yeah, my second favorite, which was right here above my head. That's why over there, if you can see. Posty. Posty is on that bed. Now, no, I don't sleep over there because that's too close to the door. I don't like. I have a phobia 
because I keep the doors open for the girls. I have a phobia. I don't. I have a phobia if I feel like people's watching me, so I don't sleep near the door. That's why I don't sleep over there. But originally, that part of the bed was against the wall, so that's why. And no, I didn't take it down because I don't want to rip my poster. But I kept my shirt and my second favorite picture above the, my bed. Now I didn't have a frame. My bed. All that I had, I had um, a box spring and two mattresses. That was my bed. I didn't have a frame. I didn't have dressers. I didn't have, no, I had a nightstand. But that's just because somebody got put out. And I was like, hey, I like this. I only got the nightstand to put my radio on so I can blast my Backstreet Boys. Because I had a radio. Um, well, it was a, it was a uh, CD player. But. That I only had it to listen to Backstreet Boys. And when I won't listen to Backstreet Boys, I listened to Star 102.1. Or it was Star 93.1 when I was listening to it. Now it's Star 102.1. But back in the days, yes, guys, I'm old. It was 93.1. So it always stayed on there. And then I had it turned down anytime I hear Backstreet Boys. Boom. It's blasted anytime. Okay, five songs played. I don't hear Backstreet Boys. I then start playing my Backstreet Boys. Anyways. So, like I said. Get up. Something's missing in this general area. I'm not really knowing what it is. And then it hits me. My shirt. And I'm pissed off. I'm mad. So I don't leave the house. I think I was watching. Uh, no, because that's when she knocked out her teeth. Because I was going to say I was watching Men in the House, but that ain't it. I was watching Men in the House, and then my mom knocked on the door, and she didn't have no front teeth. But, um, because she knocked out her teeth. Thank you. I got me some mashed potatoes and green beans. Um, I love mashed potatoes and green beans. I've just been craving mashed potatoes and green beans. Um, so, um, this time, somebody tells me, your mama got stabbed, your mama got stabbed. And I'm like, what? What? Now, still, I have not connected A and B connectors. I'm still like, oh my gosh, my mama got stabbed. What happened? What she at? Woo da, woo da, woo. I'm not knowing what happened. And I remember, my, I remember my mama telling me when she was at when she was at the um, when she was at the hospital. Um, of course, she was she was beyond drunk, beyond drunk. That's nothing new. When she knocked out her front teeth, she was drunk. So this wasn't new um, of her being drunk because, like I said, when she knocked out her teeth, um, I was 14 because Tim was just born. I was 14 when Tim was born. <clears throat> so this is 16. Desiree's already born. Tim's already born. Um, Leisha don't know that she's pregnant with, with Nick at this time. You know, so she's pregnant, but she don't know that she's pregnant. Anyways. Um, so you know, I'm, I'm 16, so I'm like, okay, um, Gary, really? Like, I put that on, I put it on mute for a reason. And so, she, and I remember her telling me, uh, like, out of her drunken stupor, she was saying that she told the doctors, don't cut the shirt off of me. If you cut your shirt off of me, you might as well let me die because I'm going to get killed when I get home. They're thinking the person that stabbed her is going to kill her if they cut her shirt. And she's like, no, like you better just let me die if you cut this shirt. So they they pull it over her head and they take it off and they put it in the back, let her have it, you know, to bring home. Because she's like, I need that shirt or I'm going to die. And Honestly, I, I probably would have. 
I'm not even I'm not even I'm not even gonna fake the funk right now because it's it was two it was two thousand and here it is two thousand nineteen and I'm telling you my st- I'm telling you this story because it's like it's still fresh in my it's still that's still a fresh wound nineteen years later. Still a fresh yeah. wound. What? She's at the you bottom of the bed. Um, go turn out the lights. KUB is not going to like me. Go! So, um, I know this sounds petty and I know this sounds bad, but like that, she knew she wasn't you supposed to touch it. That was my shirt. I didn't even wear that shirt. And I love the Backstreet Boys to the fact that if I could have got a tattoo, I would have gotten a tattoo at 16 of the Backstreet Boys. And still to this day, 2019, when I regretted it. I've been like the Backstreet Boys since um, 1997. <coughs> I would have done that. I would have done anything. If somebody told me to run outside naked for a Backstreet Boy concert ticket or whatever. Guess what? Hello. Modesty. Goodbye. That's all I'm saying. So, she comes home and all she tells me is, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I'm not knowing why she's saying sorry. Still, it has not clicked in my head. Two and two have not connected until she shows me the shirt. And I, um, I found the shirt, not the not the original shirt. So the front of the shirt bloody, the back of the shirt got a little bit of blood. I guess where they must have pulled it over her head like that. I don't know how they did it, but the back where it had the autograph, happy sweet si- happy sweet sixteen birthday, Marquita, that had blood on it. Ruined, ruined. She wasn't supposed to touch it. She wasn't supposed to touch my personal wall. But yeah, I couldn't go to the to the uh, concert because my room wasn't clean. But it was clean enough for you to come in, trespass in my room, and take my shirt off my wall. And it wasn't like okay, it was laying down. It wasn't like oh, it was folded in close. No, you came in. You had to reach over me enough to where you did not wake me up to take it off my wall because you couldn't find a shirt to wear. I, I said that, that story because I found the shirt. I found the shirt. The illustrious shirt. Of course, it sold out. And it don't have a signature. And even if it did, it wouldn't be my shirt. Because she tried to clean it. Give daddy the shirt. I mean, give daddy the, the phone. Okay, well, give daddy the phone because you got me involved. Give daddy the phone. Give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to him. Thank you. Okay, well, you got me involved, Savannah. What did you just say, mommy? Hannah is sitting on me. That's what you just said. Now. Even if it did have a signature, it wouldn't be my shirt. That shirt was special to me. One, because it was my six, six, sweet 16 birthday. And it was a birthday gift from a friend to me. And it was mine. It don't matter. It was mine. She tried to clean it. I would give that to her. But then the signature ended up getting washed off. It got ruined. It, it it couldn't be salvaged. It couldn't be salvaged. Because it was just a black marker. So, I'm going to link the pictures of um, the two pictures that I screenshotted that 
the so the shirt sold out. Even if it wasn't sold out, I don't think I'm ever gonna meet the Backstreet Boys. And even if I did, I would want to get a fresh, pristine, untouched shirt from anybody else. Except I even want to open up the whole bag. I don't want. I don't want. None of the people putting out the shirts know I want to pull it out myself. Because I want the only person to touch it is me and Brian. That's the only two people that I feel like should take it. And I'm only saying that because I think the factories that make the shirt is not human. But if a human touched it, boom, kick them in the throat. But I'm just saying because that's my shirt and that's what kind of shirt I want. That's what pristine. Because I then will go immediately and put it in a shadow box. Or if I have to vacuum seal it and freaking like put it inside of a brick house build a house in a parking lot on top till I can afford a shadow box just to dig up the parking lot and unseal the the seal bag and put it in the shadow box, I would do that so then I know that it's not going to be touched and be messed with. But I'm, I'm glad. Hopefully y'all made it to the end of this video with this story. I did find another shirt that I did find hilarious that is so me. It is so me because it says single, taken, mentally dating, Brian Luttrell. That's me. <laughs> that That's me since 97. Yep, and me. <laughs> but anyways, I'll link that one there too. That one sold out too. That one was $5. The, the Brian Luttrell um, Heart Foundation one was 28 but I was I'm willing, I was willing to pay 100 if I could have that shirt and possibly get Brian's autograph. Because, like, I would like to get another autograph. I would like to tell him my story. He probably would think, oh, my gosh, you're a crazy, obsessed fan. I could be. I might be. Okay. I don't care. But I, I it's just, I'm still heated about it. I'm... I'm mad to the point that, well, no, I'm never going to calm down. I'm never going to calm down because that's like somebody sitting there cutting off one of the girl's hair. No. What right do you have to cut my kid's hair? Excuse me. That was my shirt. What right did she have to reach over me? Look, look. You know. I'm just saying. I almost broke into Dixie Chicks. What right does he have to take your heart away? When for so long you were mine. I remember when 